patients who come to your hospital initially might be dehydrated. This dehydration is because of the osmotic diuresis component. In fact, the early symptoms that are found in diabetic ketoacidosis is nausea and very severe vomiting and the usual query of most doctors is why is this happening? Well, the ketones which are elevated in the body of this patient, ketonemia, will trigger the vomiting center chemoreceptor trigger zone and therefore protracted vomiting is seen causing fluid depletion and dehydration in the patient. Most patients will be having so much of abdominal pain that you might initially think that this person is having some surgical emergency. You will simultaneously realize that this person is not responding to your commands as the osmolality of the plasma will begin to rise. CNS manifestations will also start happening in the patient. And when you will examine him, you will be having a substantial tachycardia, orthostatic hypotension or a hypotension uniformly would be present in the patient. There would be dry oral mucosa, urine output of the person will be initially increased, but as the dehydration part will increase, then the urine output might even begin to reduce in the patient, which will explain the deranged kidney function that is found in these patients. You will notice that the patient will be having a small acidotic hyperventilation. This is a method of keeping this person alive because when a person will exhibit this acidotic hyperventilation, it will cause washout of carbon dioxide from the body. I am writing a chemistry equation before you by which you will appreciate better why I am saying that small breathing is a method of compensation for these patients. I have written this chemistry equation that you have been studying right from first year in medical school. You can see that in diabetic ketoacidosis, the ketone part, the protons are increased in the body. So they will bind with bicarbonate, whatever is available. So you will always notice that bicarbonate values will usually be reduced to less than 15 milliequivalents. Normal bicarbonate values are about 22 to 26 milliequivalents here. They are reduced. Why? Because they are consumed. The combination of the two will form H2CO3 in increased amounts. And H2CO3 will break down to produce more carbon dioxide and carbon dioxide will then stimulate the respiratory center. You are aware from physiology, one of the potent stimulus for respiratory center is carbon dioxide. So it will cause washout of carbon dioxide because he will breathe faster. And if you remove carbon dioxide from the body, then this chemistry equation will progress in this particular direction. I am saying if you remove carbon dioxide from the body, then to produce more carbon dioxide, more protons will be consumed. And if protons are consumed, it is good. Why? Because protons are the troublemaker, the ketones are acidic. I want to consume the protons in the body of this person. So hyperventilation is a method of actually trying to remove the extra protons from the body of the patient. Do appreciate the chemistry part here, which I'll try to explain again. I said, if you remove carbon dioxide from the body to produce more of it, chemistry equations operate like this, you remove something to produce more of it, more protons will be used up. That is good news. Why? Because protons are the troublemaker. They are damaging the blood-brain barrier. They are causing encephalopathy state in a patient. I don't want that to happen. So, small breathing is a compensatory mechanism in these patients. And if you bring your face close to the face of this person, you will also be noticing a fruity odor in the breath of the patient. This fruity odor in the breath is mainly because of a ketone body by the name of acetone, which is formed from acetoacetate. There are three ketone bodies, beta-hydroxybutyrate, acetoacetate and acetone. So it's the acetone that is excreted in the breath of this person.